see some of the amazing kids from A3 who have had just a few number of days to put together their own original fantasy stories. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be heaps of fun. How much? Heaps of fun. Everybody say, heaps of fun. Heaps of fun. That's right. And we're going to need lots of audience participation, too. Okay? So remember, storytelling is an interesting thing because storytelling is not a spectator sport. The audience is intimately involved in the creation of the story. And people say to me, Mark, where do you get your inspiration? They say, where do your stories come from? I tell them that I have a muse, one of the goddesses. I'll be walking around being Mark, you know. My muse comes out and goes, Psst. Huh? <laughs> she says, have I got a story for you? Now why she talks like Groucho, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but that's the way she talks. And I say, well look, I'm really busy right now. And she goes, <laughs> Don't tell me you're busy. Sorry. <clears throat> she sets me down. Then she takes a perfectly stretched white canvas and she sets it up in front of me. <clears throat> oh, here, I'll turn it so you can see. <laughs> then she takes a very sharp pencil and she starts to sketch on this canvas. She lays out the story. Now, so far, she puts it in perfect detail. She says, This is exactly, let me get the mouth right, there you go, exactly what that character's face looks like. Other part, she just blocks in the big shapes, and when she's done, she says, okay, it's your turn. And I say, yeah. <laughs> and I get out my paint box, <clears throat> and my palette. And I squeeze out some blue nouns and some uh, yellow adjectives and some, where did I put it? There it is, red verbs. <laughs> I love <laughs> red verbs. <laughs> Then it's my job as the storyteller to mix the colors, to make the pictures, that makes the words that tells the story, that lives in the house the Jack does. <laughs> I call what I do word pictures. And what that means is I do not want you to think about what I'm talking about, which is perfect for this time of night, right? <laughs> okay? No thinking allowed. I just want you to see what I'm talking about. So for instance, if I was to say to you the word tree, I do not want you to give me the dictionary definition. I do not want you to go, tree. Now, deciduous plant having roots stem, forget it. It's not what I'm after. When I say tree, I want you to see. The tree. Make it a little juicy in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Gallagher, get out. I'm the one who's in charge. No. So, this first story I want to tell you tonight. Well, the other important thing for this for storytelling is you have to use your imagination. Now, imagination is a cool thing. You know what the American Sign Language sign for imagination is? Everybody put your finger like this. Place it against the side of your head like this and say, imagination. imagination. It's the most powerful thing on the planet. And this first story has everything you need for a classic storytelling. In this story, there is a brave hero. How would you do? Who sets off to do battle with a ferocious beastie. But the wonderful thing about this story is that almost all the words in this story are nonsense words. Now, if I was to read it to you, here's how it would sound. Twas Brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. Oh, Mimsy were the Boragoves and the Momraths are grave. <laughs> Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun the frumious banders snatch. What's a momrath? Say, I don't know. I call this the math class exercise. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's a borogov? I don't know. What's a slithy toad? I don't know. Actually, it's a toad that's just a little more slithy than the one you had lunch with yesterday. <laughs> it's nonsense. But the secret, all my students, the secret to being a great storyteller is you have to make it real. You gotta make it real. <laughs> So my job, if this is all nonsense, I have to take all the nonsense in the story, and make it make sense. So this is Lewis Carroll's greatest hit. What did Lewis Carroll write? 
Now, if you want to learn Eric, you're the looking glass and what Alice found there. Cool thing about the looking glass world, it's kind of a metaphor for reality. The more you chase something, the further it gets away. And then in the looking glass world, when you finally give up and say, okay, I'm done, you look and look down and it's right at your feet. So this is Lewis Carroll's greatest hit from Through the Looking Glass. Make sure I'm tuned. This is my version of Jabberwocky. Oh. <laughs> 